take responsibility for your emotions. You are the master of your mind. Consider this scenario. You started off late for office and when you hit the highway, one after another drivers were cutting you off, thereby creating a further delay for you to reach office. And when you felt that, my God, I'm going to be late and my boss will be annoyed at me, you hit a traffic jam. By the time you cleared the neck of the jam, you had lost another 15 minutes. And when you crossed that point, you realized there was no real reason for the jam. There was a car parked on the side. And everybody who was passing by was turning to look at the car, as they say in America, the rubber neck traffic jam. So you started cursing all the drivers who delayed you further. Finally, when you reached your office building and you came to the elevator, the elevator man said, Sir, sorry, this lift is full. You come in the next round. You lost another three minutes. And when you reached your boss's office, he shouted at you. So it's natural you got into a bad mood. Who is responsible for the bad mood? All the drivers who cut you off? Or the people who turned their neck to look at the car? Or the elevator man who said you come in the next round? Or the boss who gave you a bit of his mind? Who is responsible for your bad mood? All of them? No, ultimately, we have responsibility for our emotions. What is responsibility? The ability to respond. Which means that no matter what the external environment, you have a freedom to choose how to respond to it. It is by exercising this freedom that people elevate themselves. We have the mind and the five senses associated with the mind. Some things give pleasure to the senses. Some things are displeasurable to the senses. Like, for example, too much of heat, too much of cold. Now that is displeasurable. So, when the mind is not controlled, it seeks pleasure, but the pleasure of the senses. And there is another kind of pleasure, the pleasure of the soul. For those who want to reach within, and relish that inner joy. They have to learn to become tolerant to the urges of the senses. So what are the urges of the senses? Hankering and aversion. The senses, they hanker for what is pleasant and they are averse to what is unpleasant. So, for somebody whose mind is not subdued, one is always subjected to hankering and aversion. And here, Sri Krishna is saying, Jitatmana, one who has conquered the mind, rises above such dualities. The dualities will remain. The summer will come, the winter will come. Honor will come, dishonor will come. So what do we people do? We love to be praised. We hate to be criticized. Now imagine a different scenario where you love to be criticized. Imagine how liberating it will be. Doesn't matter how anybody behaves. One gentleman called David Pole has written a book called The Law of the Garbage Truck. What happened was 
that he was a passenger in a taxi and the car was about to park somewhere when another car came and jumped into that place ahead of the taxi driver and instead of being apologetic he started gesticulating wildly at the taxi driver as if it was the driver's mistake the driver said yes 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 mm -hmm. david pole was very impressed he said wow that guy for no mistake of yours was scolding you and you took it so serenely the taxi driver said sir some people are like a garbage truck now the garbage truck carries garbage inside it and it spills it here and there from time to time if it spills on you it is not because of some problem in you but because the garbage truck is carrying that likewise people who have negativity they will spill it on you now you become upset why did he say this why did she say that then you will be subject to be controlled by the behavior of others that means the key of your emotions will lie in the hands of the others if my mother in law is nice to me then i am happy if my mother in law is not nice to me then i'm unhappy so now the mother in law is controlling the moods but shri krishna is giving a different paradigm where you are equitable to both honor and dishonor praise and criticism fame and infamy why because you realize these are all externals these are the pleasures the mind seeks but the soul will never be satisfied by these one guru he was asked by his disciple what will please god the guru said go to the graveyard and start cursing all these corpses that are lying there he went there were a whole lot of graves he cursed them all he came back the guru agya have to follow so guru ji said okay now do one thing go again this time you praise them all so he went you know last time i made a mistake i didn't realize your greatness you are actually glorious you are so tolerant you lie in the mud without any feelings and he came back so guru ji said did they respond differently when you praise them versus when you criticize them said guru ji you know it was all the same guru ji said that is the answer to your question you asked me that what should i have do and be that will be pleasing to god if you can behave like this equitable that is what shri krishna is saying here that somebody who is jitatma who has conquered the mind so this word atma comes in different contexts sometimes it means mind here it is jitatma means conquered the mind so shitoshna sukha dukheshu is one is equally poised in all these situations so we have this negativity bias of the mind right somebody has praised you 10 times and you digest it all but he has criticized you one time and the mind keeps on rotating why did he criticize why did he criticize why did he criticize we forget all the praises so the point is that criticism will always come and if you become successful you will get even more criticism because the law of the world is everybody wishes to be successful but people don't like to see others successful because it makes them look bad so if you become successful 
Don't be astonished if your friends and relatives, like the insects coming out of the woodwork, they come out to criticize you. Now, our mind makes a big deal out of it. One man went to the restaurant and said, Would you like to buy a million frogs' legs? There was a Chinese restaurant and Chinese eat frogs' legs. So he said, Do you want to buy a million frogs' legs? The restaurant owner said, Where will you get a million frogs' legs? He said, Just outside, on the garden outside my window, there are a million frogs croaking. So the owner said, Let's start with 10. You get 10 of them. Then he went, tried to catch the frogs, and he got two. And he went and gave them to the restaurant owner that here, the owner said that these are just two frogs. You were talking about a million. He said, yes, you know, but the sound they were making was of one million frogs. That is our own bias of our mind. So instead of that, we need to develop a little bit of equipoise. So when you become equipoised, the test is that negative situations, adverse situations, you can take them in your stride without getting disturbed. There's a beautiful Nelson Mandela we have heard, you know, who became the first president of apartheid free South Africa. And prior to that point, for 27 years, he was jailed. Imagine 27 years of your life, you be jailed. And then he got released. So somebody interviewed him and said, that's how did you survive through that ordeal of 27 years? Nelson Mandela said, I was not surviving. I was preparing. So what a beautiful attitude it is. If your attitude is bear with it, it is difficult times, then naturally you'll have a different mindset. And if you change your mindset, that I am preparing these difficulties are for helping me grow, then you'll say, all right, Never mind, oh God, whatever you feel is fit for me, you decide and put it in my way and I'll take it in my stride. It doesn't matter to me. So, that is the way we need to speak to ourselves. Not that the world is so difficult and I have to bear with it, but the world is preparing me all the difficulties, all the hardships. As you do your self-talk, that is how your subconscious will get programmed. The takeaway from this verse is, learn to be equipoised.